the Ravens and the Steelers has been pushed back again. And it, so, of course, there are people that are irritated because the Broncos had to play with no quarterbacks. And there are other people that are irritated because, well, this is actually hurting the Steelers, right? So they keep pushing these games back. The Steelers had to deal with the same crap with the Titans. The Steelers I don't know are, how it's hurting the Steelers to have more time to prepare for a team. Their facilities aren't shut down. No, 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 but they are they are having to play their next game. So they're supposed to play the Washington football team on Sunday at noon. My guess is they'll probably move that one to Monday the same yes. way they did the so, Ravens. So they'll have the, but, almost the exact same time off. This is ridiculous. You know, nobody's crying for the Steelers, okay? The Steelers by that. week was supposed to be in week seven. No, week eight. They yeah, instead had instead to have it. Instead, it was in week seven. No, it was, oh, my no, God. It was, week, it was oh. week four because of the oh, Titans. Oh, it hurts my heart. No, it was weeks before that because of the Titans in, in week four, I believe it was, or, or week three, one or the other. It was super early. It was way, no, no it week, wasn't uh, week, week three. Nobody had a bye week in week three. Week four. Many people start by, they start the bye weeks week four. Many other teams had a bye week in week four. That's part of it. That's fine. Okay, so. Jesus so Christ. Part of. Cry babies. <laughs> part of the issue here, um, the, the Broncos, uh, Excuse me. The Broncos fans, of course, are irritated because they had no quarterback whatsoever. And they said, well, why could we not have pushed back like a day to try and get somebody back? What's the deal? Um, there's a lot. So there's the NFL's forfeit rule in the COVID-19 warnings, et cetera, et cetera. My question to you, one, uh, why wouldn't they just push the Broncos back? I know you've got an answer for this, so go ahead and, yeah. and dive in with well, that. So one. it's not, not just, I can't, I'm, I'm uh, to address it all. Okay. Now, this is, this is not my information. All right. I heard this information from someone else who is connected to the NFL and from the NFL, whatever uh, his name. He's a writer for the Washington post. His name is either Mark mask or Maskey. It's M a S K E. Okay. He was on the Tony kind of Tony Kornheiser show. He's been kind of making the rounds. Uh, that's where I heard him been making the rounds uh, through the interwebs um, and of the talk shows today explaining the differences for everybody because a lot of people are having this question. And if I was a Broncos fan, I'd be a little miffed too. And, and, and the, the, cause a lot of the Raiders fans had the same questions as to why did you move back the Titan stuff, but you never move our stuff back. And we got hit with fines and, you know, threats of draft picks and things like that. This is the difference. The NFL has made it abundantly clear. We have given you roster flexibility we are not moving games because specific players are hurt or out or anything of that nature. That is, that is, we are not moving football games for that. Okay. We're just not, this is not that the Ravens are not able to play without any running backs. And now, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lamar's out and all this other stuff. We don't care about that. We cannot play this football game because they still have an active outbreak. It is strictly a medical safety issue. They today, four more people pop for the Ravens. They have not gotten the virus under control. Okay. That's, that's why they are continually moving it because they don't know who's safe to play and who's not. Once they figure that out, they don't give a damn how many players stars starters are, are there or not. You fill the team with 53 people, however you can fill it based on the roster uh, of flexibilities that we've given these teams, and you're going to show up to play. But we cannot do that until we have the outbreak under control. That makes sense to me. No, that, okay? that does make perfect sense. However, you have to imagine that there is something that went haywire here with the protocols and whatever else. Like somebody was not following protocol if there are this one many. person. One person is how this thing started with the Ravens. They had a trainer that was sick and came into work. And that and is where it all started. Is he actually was sick and had symptoms but didn't want to miss work and felt it was important to come in and he came in and now it is spread like wildfire because what do we know about the trainers and the, uh, the, I don't know if it's a trainer or if a strength and conditioning guy or something, those people see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the tight ends coaches. So now we're only worried about the tight ends. Those people see everybody. Um, they work with everybody and that's why it has spread as far and as wide and as fast as it has. At, at what point, because you cannot move this game into like Thursday, uh, so so at what point do you just add on to the regular season 
and well, just yeah, toss an extra We're really weekend. close to that point. I think that I don't know the answer to that, but I think we're really close to that point. Um, so, so to address how the Raiders and the Broncos situation is different than this, those were not active outbreaks or anything like that. And why were those teams punished, but the Titans were not, and uh, and the Ravens have not been punished because those teams have been found to openly be ignoring protocol. That the Raiders on multiple occasions had outbreaks, and all three times they ignored protocol. And if you're going to ignore protocol, the NFL says we're going to hammer you. Because we believe our protocols work. All these other teams don't seem to have this problem. Guys get popped. We catch it. We find it. We get it under control. But you have to follow protocol. And they didn't. Um, it's, It's yet to be determined on if the Ravens are going to suffer any consequence for protocol. The one person, I'm sure he's, I'm sure that strength and conditioning person or trainer is being disciplined internally. Um, I don't know if they've kept their job. I don't know anything about it. The name hasn't been reported out, Um, but that's a, that's a Ravens thing. The NFL hasn't seen fit to do anything yet, but that's because it's still an active case. Uh, The Broncos, the reason the Broncos were told suck it up buttercup and go play is it was found that they ignored protocol. The NFL has said, we have the technology and we have provided you the technology to have all online meetings. We don't want any team. There's no reason for you to do any class work, uh, classroom work uh, in your facilities that you should do a hundred percent of it all online. And, and we've provided every team and every player with the ability to do that. And um, the Broncos were still holding meetings in person and yeah, they posi- were not requiring groupings. to wear masks. Yeah. So that is two that is two violations of protocol, which is why the NFL says, oh, it's just you guys? Oh, but it's all your quarterbacks? Tough shit. Get your ass out there and play. Yeah. Uh, on October 5th, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell sent a memo to teams warning that teams could be forced to lose draft choices or forfeit games if COVID-19 protocols were not followed. The memo read in part, protocol violations that result in virus spread requiring adjustments to the schedule or otherwise impacting other teams will result in additional financial and competitive discipline, including the adjustment or loss of draft choices or even the forfeit of a game. Yep. So they, they don't want to do that. that. And, and that was the case. Yeah. He told the Broncos, you can forfeit this game. You can absolutely not play, and it will go down as a loss for you and a win for them. You do not have to play the game. But instead, they they took their shot. So they took their shot. They tried. And for and, all those and, people out there, by the way, that that come out and say, "Oh man, I could I could play better than that. I could compete better than that." Like this guy was a state champion high school quarterback. He played some quarterback in college. Like all this different stuff. And you saw what he did. I mean, mm-hmm. it, like what was it? Two out of two out of thirteen for like nineteen yards passing yeah. or whatever. I mean, it was just yeah, it's tough. The NFL really hard. Really difficult. Um, yeah, really difficult. So, so, but that's that's the nuts and bolts of it. That's the reason one team is being treated one way and another has been treated another. It's why earlier in the season the Titans were treated the way they were treated and the Raiders were treated the way they were. Tra- when we thought the Raiders are going to play and and half their defense is going to miss and oh my God, how is that going to work? The NFL did not care how that worked because they chose to violate protocol. Oh, we have the strain under control. We have it all cleaned up, and y'all can and, and ever we we have fifty three people that are clean. Then those fifty three people are gonna get their asses out there and play. Yeah, no, you are this this truck ain't stopping for nobody, and it ain't stopping for for uh, for Lamar. It's not stopping for for the running backs for the Ravens. It is simply because they still do not have it under control. Yeah, no, I okay, I am totally with you there. I'm totally with you. Let's jump into the chat right quick before we move topics. Uh, Terry said, what's up? Uh, he's on Facebook there, so, of course, he jumped in the chat. Cruz jumped in. Hey, Gary and Chris, woo, my Giants are in first place with four wins in the East. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I believe you're tied for first with uh, my Washington football team. Uh, but the Giants have the tiebreaker. No, they've played both their games. I think they're one and one, right? No, I could have sworn the Giants uh, won the only meeting, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Oh, maybe you're right. No, they, I do know the Giants won the last one, so if that's yeah. the only one, then then yes, they do have the tiebreaker. Yeah, I right believe now. I believe that's it. Uh, Casey said the Ravens are just trying to make excuses because they want to wait for Lamar to come back. Uh, Casey said the Broncos were going to win that game if Locke would have played. Shake my damn head. 
Uh, Damien said, what's up? And then Damien, of course, said the refs are rigged. Uh, well, of you know, of course they are. <laughs> Casey said, uh, Mike Vrabel sold his soul. Jack Thomas said, could we be looking at the potential goat in Patrick Mahomes? I know he has a ways to go, but seriously, he's got a shot, right? Uh, and then K-Storm won $450 on his parlay and said that we have the best show in the land. So, Hey, correction, uh, Mr. Cruz, uh, they have played twice, and the Giants won both of them. I did not think that. I missed that somewhere. And there you go. So, so they, they have a definitive tiebreaker. They most certainly do. They most certainly do. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll get to Patrick Mahomes here in just a little bit. We'll uh, 